regular course of our liturgical year, the church takes the opportunity and liberty to highlight certain tenets and aspects of our faith and to shine a big light on them so that it can be like a neon sign getting our attention so we can look at it and ask ourselves, what does it mean? Today, 27th Sunday of Ordinary Time, the church takes this opportunity to highlight respect for life. Today is Respect Life Sunday. And I think that we look at it in a very important and a very critical time, not only during the liturgical year, but most especially and most importantly in the times that we are living in right now. God says to us through the prophet Jeremiah, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. God knows us even before we are conceived. One of the questions I always ask parents who bring their kids for baptism, what name do you give your child? Because I want them to understand that although they gave their children their name, the scripture says God knows us and calls us by name even before we're born. And so parents are inspired by God to give their children those names. Life is sacred. All life, all human life is sacred and cannot be marginalized or compromised. And yet we live in such a very critical time because more and more and more, even though we claim to be a nation that believes in God, more and more and more we're becoming pagan in the ways we live. This afternoon I'm getting on a plane and I'm heading to France. I want you to know that there was a time that France was a bastion of Catholicism. Do you know do you realize that right now, in France, there are more practicing Muslims than Christians? And do you know why? Because of contraception. Because of contraception, Europe is below zero population right now. For the sake of the children, what contraception means is against conception, against life. So when we contracept, we play God. We decide when life begins. We decide when life ends. And there are consequences for making those kinds of decisions and kinds of choices. live at a very critical time. And before I say anything, I want you to understand I'm not about politics. I hate politics. I think there's too much of it. What I'm about is Jesus Christ and his gospel of life. We have to begin, we have a duty, my brothers and sisters, to vote. It is a duty. But we have to vote with an informed conscience. And so that, therefore, it makes us obliged to inform our conscience. How do we inform our conscience? Well, statistics tell us that most people today inform their conscience through the internet, television, newspapers. And that's Okay, those are probably good sources to get information, but when you want the truth, where do you go to 
get the truth? Do you know what the sacred scriptures say? What does God have to say about life? What does your church have to say? And I know there's a big article in Union Leader today about the decreasing number of people who've left the church. And a lot of people have left the Catholic Church because they disagree with the church's teachings. How foolish. They don't know their faith. They don't know the scriptures. Because the scripture says in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, that the pillar and foundation of the truth is the church. Jesus established a safe repository for the truth in his church. So you can point to me, and you can point to the bishops, and you can say, that's why we don't go. My answer to that is, set your sights a little higher. You don't come here because of me. You come here because you believe in Jesus Christ and his teachings and what we celebrate on this altar at the holy sacrifice of the mass. I'm going to France because I'm going with a team of people who are going to enthrone the world to the sacred heart of Jesus. That we can begin to build the civilization of love. And what it means to build a civilization of love is to accept the life of God in its fullness. No one would argue with me that we have made a mess of things. And if things are going to straighten out, we have to submit and we have to bow down to Christ. To His ways. I ask you to please pray for us. Believe me when I tell you it is a big deal that what we are going to do. It may not seem like a big deal to the world. It seems significant. Because it's not all lit up and it's not gold lined, you see. And there are no big names. None of that stuff. That's not the way the gospel. That's not the way God works. God works in little ways. But pray for us because this is the beginning. <clears throat> to build a civilization of love means to understand that God is our Father and that we are all His children. Life is precious. Life is sacred. Think of the message that we are sending these children. If life can be compromised, if we can decide when life begins and when life ends, you and I are getting older. And you now, we're now being told that the most important issue that we have to decide things on is the economy. What a deception. What a lie. Because if human life is not the premier issue that we look at, and we make choices based on the sanctity of life, then nothing else matters. What is going to happen if the day comes that when you and I are too old to take care of, it becomes so expensive for us that we become liabilities? Do you want somebody deciding whether you live or die? God breathed life into my soul at conception, and I pray God that He be the only one to take it. And if you don't think that we're living in a time that that can't happen, your eyes are closed. Your eyes are closed. Inform your conscience. Inform. Understand what the issues are and understand where people stand on them. Critical, critical, critical times that we live in. What we do now, today, is going to make all the difference tomorrow. 
we've been silent too long. The attitude has been as long as it's not in my backyard. Well, I'm here to tell you it's in your backyard. It's in everybody's backyard. We have to make some tough choices. And one of the tough choices that we have to begin to make, okay, is to begin to understand that we don't depend on a government to take care of one another. We depend on one another. That's what the gospel is. Love your neighbor. We have to take care of one another. Thank you. 